Hi, and welcome to the Dog Sports Decoded podcast. My name is Megan Ritchie, and I am the host, and today I wanted to talk to you about Candy Cross. What is it, why you should give it a try, and how you can get started. So this is just going to be a Candy Cross a quick start guide. Um, this is not intended to be a full encompassing how-to, just enough to get you started and see if you like it. So with that said, uh, let's dive in. So what is Candy Cross? Um, quite simply, it is just uh, walking or running with your dog hooked up to a belt. Um, so this is a dog sledding sport uh, where your dog is going to kind of help propel you. Um, but, but very basically, you can go out for a jog or walk or run with your dog. Um, it's just a way to have them attached to you with, on a leash and, uh, and have them give you a little propulsion with it. So why would you want to try it and who would benefit from participating in it? Uh, so, uh, first of all, if your dog pulls you on a leash when you go for a walk, Candy Cross is a great option for you. Um, like I said, you and your dog will be hooked up to a belt, so it's going to lower the center of gravity when they pull you, which will be- make it a little easier for you to control them. Um, it's also going to make that pulling okay. So, uh, you're not frustrated when they're pulling you on the leash, we're just going to, they're doing it anyway, um, so by allowing them to do it, uh, in fact, if anything, you'll notice they stop pulling, but um, by allowing them to pull, um, all of a sudden we're just going to change your mindset. It goes from being bad that they're pulling to being good that they're pulling. So if they're pulling you anyway, um, and you maybe are working on loose leash walking or something else, uh, this can be a good kind of in-between step. Um, it's obviously not great to try and teach loose leash walking and pulling at the same time. It can be a little confusing to them, but... Uh, as a way of easing your frustration and their frustration, it can it can really help with that side. So, um, who else would benefit from it? Uh, if your dog has a lot of energy and um, maybe more energy than you, or um, or you know they can outlast you if you take them for a walk and it's just not enough. Uh, dog sledding or or canny cross in this case can be a really great alternative. So. Um, you know, down the road, if you want to get into something a little more fast-paced with your dog, you can do that, but Candy Cross is a great place to start. Uh, so who else would benefit if your dog is bred to be a kind of dog sled breed? Um, some of the Spitz breeds, Husky, Samoid, um, you can get a lot of benefit from this. Uh, your dog has an innate uh, desire to pull, so uh, let's just put that to good use and um, and let them kind of express that uh, inborn desire. So uh, I think they can really benefit. And if you're drawn to that breed, you're probably also a little bit drawn to dog sledding anyway. Um, and lastly, if you want, if there's another dog sledding sport you want to try, um, say kick sledding, bike joring, uh, ski joring, don't really like to talk about the S word quite yet, but uh, the snow is coming. So um, if you're interested in participating in ski joring or something this winter, uh, getting some of the groundwork done uh, using Canyon Cross can be a great way to, to introduce those um, uh, cues and skills before you hit the skis and the trails. So. Um, so those are that's kind of who would benefit from it. Um, doesn't really matter the size of your dog. Uh, obviously, the bigger and stronger they are, the more pulling power they're going to give you. But um, you can participate with any dog anywhere from you know Chihuahua to uh, uh, Saint Bernard or anything in between. So um, the speed might vary and the pulling power is going to vary. But any dog can participate. Uh, you do not need a full sled team (laughs) Um, for candy cross uh, one or two dogs is a great great way to start so so that's what i want to talk to you guys about um so how can you get started if you're interested uh so first of all you're going to need some gear um what's nice with candy cross you don't need a ton of gear so basically you're going to need a harness um some sort of bungee leash that will absorb the impact of the dog kind of pulling and stressing and then a uh, a waist belt so I'm going to show you a couple options here. Um, so I guess I'm going to start with the waist belt. Um, so this is the Man Mat uh, Simple rate Waist Belt. And what we're looking, this is probably sitting a little high on me here. But what we're looking for uh, is to get this uh, broad, broad belt like this. And then uh, we want it to sit a little bit higher, uh, or sorry, a little bit lower on your back to relieve that back pressure. So. Um, Once you get going, this is what you're going to want something like this. Uh, So you can see it's got some uh, straps um, to keep that uh, belt portion lower on the back to reduce back pain and um, any stress on your actual spine. 
So uh, it's got a nice wide band, again, just to distribute that pulling power. And then on the front here, um, you can see it's got a low connection point for the bungee leash and uh, adjustable waist, waist um, straps. So uh, it can be anywhere very simple. There's uh, lots of different brands and things available. Um, when I started, I actually didn't own the store yet, my store High Drive. So uh, another alternative uh, was using a climbing harness for rock climbing. So that's actually what I have and, uh, and use day to day. So, um, so that's what we have here. Right. So from there, you're going to need a harness. Um, for your dog. So this is the Mad Mad X back harness. Um, again, there's a lot of different um, makes. Uh, this is just one we really like and sell. So um, you can see it kind of goes the full length of the dog uh, and then the most of the pulling power is going to be um, up in the shoulders and along the chest there. So uh, something like that works really well for most dogs. If you have a smaller dog, um, say under, kind of start to see some issues with fit uh, around under 30 pounds ish um, with some of these X backs, uh, or if you have a dog that's sort of a unusual so size or build for sledding. So most of the sledding dogs have kind of that athletic, obviously husky type build. Um, but if you have a, a breed that's um, a little unusual, maybe shorter backed or um, or more broad, like a bulldog type type breed, um, you might have a little bit of fit issues because to get a wide enough neck in a standard harness, um, you're also going to increase the length, which your dog might not um, be able to fill in a full X back harness like this. Um, so you can use uh, we uh, something like this Mad Mad Universal harness. Um, it's just a, sh a shorty harness, a short back harness. Um, so for dogs that are a little shorter backed, uh, that's going to work a little better. And like I said, for, for smaller dogs, that tends to work pretty well. Um, but when I actually started, uh, if you have one, I just used a very simple kind of multi-sport harness. Um, so this one is just nylon. Um, again, this was a shorty. Uh, it's a good place to start. I think it was, they're pretty inexpensive to buy at the pet store. If I have this one done up properly, see here. Um, but just a typical standard, mine's pretty big here to show you, but um, standard neck and then uh, you know, multiple different um, snaps for the back, different adjustment points. I wouldn't suggest this maybe long term if you really get into Candy Cross, but if you already have one from another sport, if you do uh, tracking or nose work or something like that, um, you can definitely make do with, with that kind of harness um, until you get, get hooked. So the last um, piece of equipment I wanted to cover here today is just a bungee leash. Um, there's lots of different leashes you can get, uh, but just something simple. Um, this one has a loop. You might find they have two different um, snaps, but just anything with a bungee. And again, that is just to absorb uh, any of that shock, both on yourself and your dog. So uh, just to reduce any, um, you know, spine issues, muscle soreness from uh, that, you know, just the shock of the dog pulling. So that's what you're going to want and, uh, and need to have. Um, if you're just trying this for the first time and you kind of want to you know, see if you can make do with what you have um, until you find out if you like it or your dog likes it. Uh, depending on the size of your dog, uh, you can definitely just use a regular leash. Uh, a bungee leash is definitely best and the bigger dog you have, um, the more I would recommend even just starting with a bungee. If you have a bungee for your car or something like that, you kind of want to make shift something, uh, you can definitely do that. I'd be careful if you have a reactive dog that you're worried about them getting away, but if you're just kind of practicing in the backyard or, or going down the street and you kind of just want to, uh, you know, uh, MacGyver something, uh, you definitely can do that. But uh, a simple kind of six foot leash, uh, some sort of harness to start with. Like I said, I showed you kind of the man mat um, X back and shorty harness, but if you have a re just a regular uh, shorty harness, you can use that to uh, to give it a try. And um, the waist belt. One word of caution, kind of on the waist belt side, um, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying a hands-free um, waist belt. They don't have that leg strap to keep that belt in place. They also don't have the wide band to kind of help uh, distribute the pressure. So I wouldn't go out, even though they're, you know, you're probably going to spend, say, about $50 to buy a hands-free uh, 
walking belt, um, it'd be the same to buy a race belt. So uh, if you're not sure, I would just go ahead and buy the um, the dog sledding specific waist belt, uh, candy cross belt for yourself, uh, rather than buying a hands-free, you're, you're just going to have to replace it um, with, a, with a dog sledding specific waist belt down the road. Um, so I, that would be one thing I'd kind of caution you, just save your money on the hands-free. If you already have one and you want to use it to try, you certainly can. Um, be careful if you have a little bit of a larger dog that is a very strong puller. Like I said, it's, it's a little hard on the spine. Um, if you have a smaller dog uh, or a dog that doesn't pull super hard, uh, you can also just use a regular leash, kind of tie it around your waist and hook hook your leash up to that. So um, if you're just going to give it a try for a few days and see if you like it, uh, that's a way you can kind of MacGyver um, a system together until you're sure, yeah, I want to invest in, uh, in some equipment and give this a try. So that's all you need. Harness, bungee lead, and a waist belt for yourself. Um, so from there, uh, we have some commands we want to teach our dog, and uh, again, this is not intended to be sort of an all-encompassing training um, course or video, so I'm just going to give you kind of the quick cheats um, to get you going and to give it a try. So what I would recommend, there's a few different commands you're going to use, but I would just introduce these on a walk. So I would hook your dog up to their harness, your belt, the leash, um, get yourself set up that way and just take them for a walk and you're going to start to introduce these commands as you go. So um, the first command we're going to start to teach our dog as we're walking around the neighborhood is uh, we need some directional cues so that they know which way to turn. Um, ideally they're going to be in front of you um, and of course pulling but uh, we're just going to start whether they are or aren't we're going to start to incorporate these cues. So uh, like I said the first one's sort of directional so we have G to turn to the right and ha to turn to the left. So if you're walking down the street and I want to make a right turn to go around the block, I'm just going to say G and I'm going to say that maybe two or three dog lengths before the turn because I want, you know, my dog has to, I have to get it out. My dog has to think about what I'm saying and then uh, we want to turn. So I want to introduce it before the turn. So if I'm going to turn right, uh, like I said, a couple dog lengths before the turn, I'm just going to say G. As we go around the corner, we're just going to walk and pull the dog that way, um, kind of as we go. And if you have a regular walk that you like to go on, your dog kind of already knows the route, this can be a really good way um, to introduce it, because your dog already knows they're going to turn right. So you can just say G, they're going to turn right naturally, um, and you can just say yes and keep going. And, uh, and so they're going to be correct, because they're already you're going to turn that way, basically. And, uh, and vice versa. If I wanted to turn left, I'm just going to say ha, go across the street, and, and continue to go on our walk. So when you first introduce it, of course, it's going to mean nothing to your dog. Um, that's where, you know, if they are already going on a, a walk they know, um, you're going to increase your chance of success. But, but of course, if they don't turn left when you say ha, um, you're just going to walk that way. So they don't have to be pulling you, they don't have to turn that way you're just going to turn that way and continue on and they'll walk with you on that way. So um, that's how we're going to start to introduce those cues and uh, eventually of course we want our dog in front of us and kind of deciding to make those turns themselves. So G for right, HA for left. Um, the next thing uh, you would like to introduce, uh, kind of the next two cues, um, WO to stop. Um, and as I'm giving these cues, if you prefer to use something else, so Instead of using G and HA, you could certainly just use right and left or whatever cue you'd like. Um, these are just ones that are, are typically used. So um, again, uh, the next uh, cue to teach would be something to stop. So I find kind of walking around the city, most often when I'm using this, we get back to the car or I want to stop to deposit poop in a bin or something like that. But uh, whoa, to stop our dog. Um, and then the next cue would be on by. So if your dog's stopping to sniff something or wants to pee on something, you're just going to use the cue on by and kind of pull them to keep them keep them moving. So uh, once they're in that harness, their candy cross harness, uh, that's working time. And so we don't want them stopping to do anything else. They should be working and pulling and, and uh, you know, down the road once, once they know what they're doing. So that's our goal. So we want to keep using that on by or you could use leave it whatever your cue is that you would like to use. Uh, so the next cues that will be handy to have um, 
that you'll start to introduce. So once your dog sort of gets the routine a little bit, I find this is a little easier to teach afterwards once they're already pulling, would be a line out cue. So when you're going to use this, if you're just starting um, your walk or, or run or whatever you're doing, line out just means go to the end of the leash and kind of put tension on the leash, but stop there, basically. Um, and in all reality, you're probably going to be the one stopping them, uh, but it just means put tension on the leash and, and kind of move to the end of the line. And this is really handy once you start getting into um, biking and things like that with your dog. It's, it's nice to keep, or multiple dogs, it's nice to keep that line tight if they're not going to get tangled in it, um, you know, get it wrapped around your bike tire, things like that. Maybe not so important for Candy Cross if we're just starting, um, but it's definitely a cue you're going to need down the road as you get going. If you want to start to introduce this cue, you definitely can. I find the kind of easiest hack, uh, maybe not the, the official way to teach it, but um, in my mind the easiest if you're just giving this sport a try is, uh, you know, as your dog starts to pull, basically you're going to leave the house or get out of the car wherever you've got them hooked up. And uh, I would just stand there until they put uh, tension on the leash. So that's, and then, you know, say line out, wait till they put some tension on the leash, and then say yes and reward them by walking forward. So that's going to be the simplest uh, way to do it. If you're having a hard time, uh, like I said, it's kind of funny. As soon as, if you have a dog that's a horrible puller on leash normally, as soon as you put them in the harness and expect them to pull, they're probably going to stop. So if that happens to you, um, and you find you're waiting a long time for your dog to put that pressure on that leash and, and line out, I would just shorten the leash. So you could make the leash maybe two or three feet long, just shorten it in your hand, um, say line out, as soon as they put the pressure on, say yes, start walking forward, and then as they kind of get walking forward, moving forward, just slowly the, let the line out of your hand. Um, so that's a good way to kind of start to introduce that cue. Kind of along the lines of our stop, sometimes it's nice to have a slow down cue. So if you're running or kind of speed walking with your dog um, and you're approaching somebody, it's kind of nice to have some sort of cue to slow them down. So you could use slow, easy, steady, you know, whatever you'd like to use, doesn't really matter. Um, just pick a cue and that's going to mean slow down. So uh, again, an easy way to introduce this. Um, if you're speed walking and they're kind of pulling you, just say steady and then start walking at a normal pace. And uh, as soon as they kind of slow down a little bit, say yes, and you can reward them by speeding up or just continuing going. But uh, just start to incorporate that cue. I also really like to have this one uh, for going downhill. Uh, again, usually we want our dog to pull us up the hill, but uh, naturally, of course, they want to pull us down it. Uh, so if you're being a little careful, especially if it's slippery and icy out, um, to use that steady cue and then be able to have them kind of slowly go down the hill instead of trying to drag you down at a full full run is kind of a nice cue to have. And then um, the last one uh, often people will ask is, okay, well that's good, I can stop my dog, I can turn my dog now, we can slow down, uh, but how do we actually get started? And um, I, I think you'll find you don't actually need a starting cue. Um, your dog's naturally, you're just going to, you know, say line out and they're naturally going to go as soon as you sort of release them by moving forward. But if you'd like to incorporate a start cue, um, I find I tend to use let's go. Um, I don't really think about it as a cue. Uh, I, it just kind of, I naturally say it when we start moving. So I don't think it's a cue for me. If you'd like to use a cue, something like that, let's go. Um, I know, you know, in the movies they often say hike, whatever you'd like to use. Um, you can certainly incorporate a, cue, a start cue if you'd like. Um, but, it, you know, I don't think you'll find it's necessary. As soon as you start to move, your dog will move. So, uh, so that's the cues you need to introduce. Uh, so if you're just starting again, I'd really focus G, Ha, On, By, and probably Wo. Um, those are probably the biggest ones. And then start to incorporate some sort of line out when you start. And definitely a slow, steady is uh, is nice to have um, once you uh, once you get going a little bit further down the training road. So that's it. Um, those are the cues you're going to need. And um, like I said, I would just start to incorporate them on your everyday walk. Um, if you don't have a harness yet, you're still waiting to order it, whatever that is, you can use it just 
even if you've got them hooked up to your flat buckle collar or um, kind of an all-purpose training harness like this one if you use something like that um, I have my dogs hooked up to a front clip harness when we go for our regular walks and I incorporate those cues so it's just a, a way for me to tell them okay we're gonna go across the street now or we're gonna turn up here um, so they start to learn those cues. So you, they don't have to be in their, their canning cross harness when you introduce this, just as you're out walking um, with them. They can be off leash, they can be on leash, doesn't matter, just start to incorporate these, uh, these um, cues. As you get all your gear together, of course, you can practice in harness and start to raise those expectations. So if we're going down the trail and the trail splits and I say G, ideally your dog's gonna start to point and turn that way. You're gonna say yes and just keep going. Um, so the reward for your dog often is just keep going. So if they don't choose the right direction, so in this case if our trail splits and I want them to go to the right and they turn to the left, I'm just going to plant my feet, stop, wait till they turn to the right, say yes, and keep moving. So pretty simple um, and something we can just start to build uh, that expectation. Again, just try to use that cue, um, you know, a few dog lengths at least before you hit that, uh, that turn or, or break in the trail. So that's it. That was kind of a crash course in uh, in Candy Cross. I think it's a great sport to get involved in um, and really where you need to start uh, the groundwork for any future dog sledding sport. So if you want to do kick sled, ski jaw, bike jaw down the road, uh, it's nice to introduce those when you're on the flat ground um, and can start to incorporate some of these cues. Again, it's not a really uh, equipment heavy sport. It doesn't require a lot of, um, I'll say, formal training you don't need access to a lot of specialty equipment like agility or fly ball would um, you know once you have your harness and harness leash waist belt uh, you're pretty much set and kind of the sky's the limit as far as how much training you want to do um, just depends on your interest level and, and access to trails so i know this has been a super quick crash course and you probably have other questions um, i've been thinking about doing some sort of either 21 or 30 day challenge type course to get everybody started with a little bit more um, training and a little more information on harness fit and things like that. So if that does interest you, um, maybe drop a comment uh, in the comments below or send me an email at uh, hello at myhighdrivedog.com and uh, I'll see about setting up some sort of 21 day uh, training challenge, uh, canning cross challenge that uh, maybe a group of us can get together and I can give you some information on how to find good trails and things like that. So just trying to gauge sort of the interest in uh, in pulling something like that together. So uh, if you don't mind, please just uh, drop a comment below the video or, or wherever you happen to see this and uh, or send me a quick email and uh, I'll see about pulling something like that together here. Um, I know it like said I don't really like mentioning that S word, but uh, I think the snow is going to be flying around here pretty soon. So uh, I'd like to be able to get you guys out to training and uh, and incorporating some of these cues so you're ready for cross country ski season or or do some fat biking or whatever you'd like to do with your dog this winter. So um, if you don't mind, just drop me a quick note and say yeah, we'd be interested, and I'll uh, I'll set something like that up. So with that said, thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll catch you guys next week. How much? Good, I'm by. That's it. I'm by. I'm by. Come by. That's it. Uh-uh. That's it. Good boy.
way. Okay, I'm out. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.